morning to another session of the Potter's Gate live broadcast. This morning I am broadcasting from my office studio. Thank God for his wonderful grace and mercy over our life. Thank him for his love and kindness for giving us another beautiful day like this. God has been so faithful. The past few days has been a great time of spiritual impact and also a time of great challenge for me personally, you know, as, uh, as a father, you know, uh, as a family. But we thank God for his mercy and his love and his goodness. Uh, wherever you are there this morning, I just want to encourage you before we go into uh, uh, what we have this morning, that you need to set your heart, you need to set your mind on the Lord. No matter what may be happening within or around your life, know that God is with you. The Father promised you his presence. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. So I want to encourage you this morning to, to hold on to that word, to hold on to that principle that the will of God for your life will be fulfilled, will be established regardless of what you may be going through right now. God's counsel for your life. Thank you, my sister, for joining this morning. No matter what you may be going through, it's a passing phase. It's a passing phase. It is a passing phase. It will come and it will go. But before or you, 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 you get to the point of giving up, I need you to listen to what God amen, is saying in his word. Because it's important that we understand the prophetic perspective of where we are, the nature of the days that we live in. All right? We're in a time where the Bible says darkness is covering the earth. Great darkness, the people. Thank you, Brother Sharon, for joining this morning. Uh, it's nice to have you. All right. I believe this morning God is going to give us some very important insight that will allow us to you know, progress further into all right, that which the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I also want to welcome our, you know, our, our listener this morning from you know, our broadcast, from our live broadcast on the, the Potter's Gate live feed. I want to welcome you. If you're joining us this morning, if you're listening via the radio, welcome. If you look at the animal kingdom, if you look at the world of the, uh, you know, the plant kingdom, everything is tagged to, to seasons. Season defines amen, our, our growth, our development, our maturity. It defines how we, we evolve, how we transform. And so it's important that we understand that as, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. If there are seasons that have been designed to guide our life in the natural, obviously there are seasons defined, amen. Thank you, Brian, all right, to guide us and to lead us in the things of God. Remember that we are first spiritual beings. We are first spiritual beings. We are first spiritual beings. So understanding the laws that guide our life spiritually all right, helps us to navigate the challenges of life. Sometimes when we go through challenges, we are faced with trouble, we are faced with persecution, we are, we are faced with needs, we are faced with all kinds of things. Suddenly we forget who we are, we forget our identity, that we are first spiritual. And therefore how we relate or deal with things must be spiritually oriented. So the point this morning that I'm making is, as I begin to look into, into lives, into what is happening, in, in fact, in the body of Christ, and as I see, you know, the kind of conversation or right, that is going on in society, the way people are talking about the church vis-a-vis -vis leadership today, in, particularly when you when you listen to what is going on, amen, uh, 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 in the corridors of power with regards to religion and spirituality, people are no longer finding it, you know, uh, uh, you know, funny with what they're seeing, with what they're hearing in regards to the church. But I also want us to understand that as, as, as members of the body of Christ, you see, there are different dimensions to, you know, to, 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 to explain the condition of the days that we live in, all right? We're faced with issues that are affecting our life, both from a macro pr perspective, but we're also dealing with issues that are affecting us from, from a very national, global perspective. So how do we begin to marry and understand, bring to you know uh, uh, to clarity all that is happening around us, so that we can have a coherent, you know, uh, uh, solution or answer to what is happening. Now, that takes a prophetic insight. That takes a prophetic understanding. For a while, we've been dealing with, you know. We're praying and seeking God to expand our sight so that we can see things the way he sees them. Because when we begin to see things the way God sees them, all right, then our, 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 our concept of judgment and our concept of, 
you know, speaking, you know, what we say, what we verbalize, what we declare, all right, changes. Perception changes our vocabulary. Perception changes the way we interact, the way we deal with things, the way we, you know, we engage with things. Now, we're talking about engaging the seasons of God. For us to be able to deal with life, either from a political, you know, economic, or, you know, social you know, a uh, uh, family in concept. We need to have an understanding of where we are. What is God saying? What is the requirement of God for the days we're living? What is the demand of God for the days we're living? So if we look into the word of God, we begin to find blueprints. We begin to find blueprints. We begin to find perception. We begin to find direction. All right. So, so one of the things I believe the Spirit of the Lord is doing in this season in time, as we continue to see, all right, the, 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 the the manifestation of the false of the false order of the false you know prophets as we begin to see what you know people today are tagging prophetic and and that is bringing a lot of disdain a lot of you know disgrace a lot of shame to the house of god heaven is also releasing amen his own his own prophets Heaven is also releasing its own prophet, all right? And, and, and this release will bring us to a point where we are able to collide, amen, with the false order. Remember, that is the principle God showed us. In the day that God wanted to release his children from the house of bondage in Egypt, what did God do? He raised himself a prophet. He raised himself a prophet and he sent them, amen, to go, excuse me, and he sent him by the name Moses, he sent him to go challenge, amen, the principality that is holding his people back. But the, quest, the concept here is that uh, everything that God gave Moses, all right, except for one, that God gave Moses in terms of authority and power was duplicated. Listen to this. Everything that God gave Moses, all right, in terms of power and authority was duplicated except for one. And we're coming to that day, we're coming to that season, all right, where the power of the enemy, okay, will not be able to challenge that which the Spirit of the Lord, amen, is about to release. Amen. The, the, the first miracle, the second miracle, the third, you know, the third miracle, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, were all duplicated. Pharaoh said, you think, you think I'm just going to let you guys go free? All right, so we see all that right now. The point I'm bringing out is, where we are right now, all right, may be a concept where we're seeing a duplication, where we're seeing, all right, a kind of, a, a, you know, a duplication of what the Lord is doing. Uh, the, the false prophets, all right, they, they are speaking, you know, they, 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 they've got the face of a lamb, but they, you know, but, 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 but their voice is that of, you know, of, of you know, of, of a beast. And we're seeing all kinds of things today that is buffeting, that is dumbfounding, you know, our, our concept of spirituality. And we're wondering, is this the church? I mean, are those people actually representing God? You know, people are seeing all kinds of things, but alas, we have not seen the true church. We have not seen the true, you know, the the the, the, the true impact of that which the, the Lord called the ecclesia. So what we're seeing out there that people are talking about tagging it church, amen, is not actually representing the church. It does not represent God. They send themselves. They 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 they, they they're going on their own. They they represent themselves. They represent their own interests. And so we need to first of all look inward and ask ourselves. Are we actually, you know, sighted enough to recognize what God is doing? Because there are times that the Lord will allow certain things to begin to happen. All right. God is allowing those things to happen, not because he wants iniquity to thrive, not because he really wants to, you know, mur and, you know, and, and, and allow his church to be disdained, if you will. But because, amen, he's got an objective. The objective of God, amen, must be cited by a deep profound prophetic insight we need to have an understanding of where we are all right if, if you look at the children of israel when the lord was trying to save them what were they doing they were busy complaining they were busy complaining they were busy fighting moses you know you moses you've come to you know increase our labor you've come to put more burden on us why don't you just leave us where we are why don't you just allow us to do what we need to do why why do you have to come and tell us that there is a god somewhere that that wants to save us no leave us we we're fine with where we are after all, we're getting our daily bread. Leave us. But God had a plan. God had a plan. God had a plan. And I tell you, God had a plan for your life. God still have a plan for my life. God has a plan for this nation. God has a plan for his church. God has a plan for the body of Christ. But we need to, first of all, understand that plan and align ourselves to that which the Spirit of the Lord is doing. 
it is vitally important that we understand all right that this day is the day of the lord how do we engage this day how do we engage all right the reality the challenges of this day and to me i think that is important because if we don't understand that it will be very difficult it will be very difficult for us all right to 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 engage the, the you know the things of the spirit it will be very difficult um I, I just need to change the network of you know this uh, uh this recording because I, i'm it seems i'm having the same problem we had yesterday so if you will just give me a few minutes please give me a few minutes and i will come back uh, and and we will continue just to get the network a bit you know uh, improved if you don't mind thank you <laughs> 